It's blowing a gale outside and it's slashing down with rain, uh, typical uh, late December day. So um, I've been having a good tidy up in my workshop today and um, I dug something out and I thought, well, it is the Panto uh, season now, um, but don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sing or dance or tell hideous jokes. Um, but um, I found, um, I'd had it in a box and I've got several of these in bits and pieces. Um, and I found this rather uh, attractive Aladdin, hence Panto, uh, this uh, Aladdin oil lamp, paraffin lamp, call it what you will. And um, the intention is to try and get it going again. Uh, we're, be, we're being told constantly uh, in the UK that um, we might have to expect power outages or power cuts, um, you know, at some time if it becomes really cold in January and February. And um, these are still usable when, you know, I'm not going to say restored because I think this is quite a late one. It, it's, these were made over many, many years. Um, these are, this is the, the Aladdin 23 model lamp. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've, I've I rave about the Aladdin greenhouse heaters, which I've used for many, many years. And um, basically, it's just a smaller scale version of that. And um, I shall now move the camera around and we'll have a look what I'm going to do to this. It's, it's in reasonable condition. It's not going to need major works by any means. So, I mean, these are very basic and um, very basic technology. Obviously, um, there again, this is this is glass, so one has to be quite careful with this. This is absolutely filthy. So we're going to take this off, and then I shall uh, inside. I shall um, wash that in some nice, just tepid, warm, you know, obviously detergent, as you do any kind of washing up. Any how you'd wash any other glass item, you know, how you how you'd wash a wine glass or a drinking glass, say, um, is the best thing that. And also this um, this has got a rather a nice um, Aladdin. Um, perhaps if I, that, that just, this is like a, almost like a springy little bit of, uh, metal and that just, this, this chimney tube just pulls out and, um, if I hold that in, hopefully you might see that it's got rather a nice Aladdin, um, emblem on there and it says the, uh, the Aladdin lamp and the established in 18, in, in 1908 and, um, obviously was very revolutionary, um, compared with what I'm going to call a flat wick kind of lamp, as you'll see when we get it, hopefully, when we get it going. And um, there again, that can be just wash, warm washed. It's filthy again. Um, can be just warm washed in some tepid, you know, uh, detergent washing up water. Um, now, the, these Aladdin, um, this is, I say, this is a, there's a whole series of them. This is a series 23, which was one of the last built. This just lifts off, and we'll give that a little bit of a clean up. I don't think that is solid brass, it's just a brassy coloured metal, but we'll clean it up nonetheless. Um, this bit should. Now, this is the important part that we're not going to be able to save that. That is the Aladdin locks on mantle, which is very important as we'll see later. And you can see this one has broke away uh, from the top. It might still work. Um, we'll be careful with it and we'll, we'll, we'll hold on to that there. So further breaking this down, as I say, um, that bit twists and lifts off. And then I think that does We'll, we'll explore that bit later. As I say, you can see it's, it's covered in fluff and wants a good clean. Then we have um, another little bit that lifts off the burner base there. And um, as I say, that's in reasonably good condition. And then we have what is known as the flame spreader. And that's, there again, that's full of fluff. And so we'll Give that a good wash and a good clean as well. All these parts, as I say, can be washed, no problem. Um, I don't know whether, very often you'll find, ooh, um, that um, the <laughs> kerosene or paraffin tank does, with age, 
not been used for a long while, if it's got some old fuel in there, it can get, you know, a little bit gummed up. And um, with our duster and just a little pair of sort of long nose pliers there, that's all we need. As I say, that, ha that should also have a um, small seal on that as well obviously which that has so that's fine and uh, I want to take this assembly to bits and there's a lot of dust collected in this like the base of the burner unit here but the wick I was just looking I have some new old stock Aladdin wicks but they're not for a 23 I believe that's model 21 and I've got um, model 11 and 12 um, but the wick has, obviously at some point it's had a new wick um, and it has not had a lot of use. It's not misshapen or too burnt and it seems a shame really to throw that out. But um, I want to clean this so it reme basically remains moving the wick and see if we can reuse the wick. So basically on a 23 model to remove the wick, all you want to do is just wind this up um, and then keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Just hold it because you'll hear the you'll hear if you've got any paraffin left in the tank, it'll be there'll be a certain amount running into there. And then obviously we'll put that. It's still it's it's still got the wick, the nice brass wick carrier, and we'll put it in a bowl. And um, hopefully we'll try and um, reuse that because it's such a good wick. So I've um, just been cleaning this. Um, tank assembly up with a bit of metal polish. Um, I'm using a Brasso. Other polishes are available. <laughs> uh, whatever works for you or whatever you like or whatever you have. Um, I wash the burner and just give them that. I'm not going to polish that, over polish that. Um, it's always worth making sure that's this is where the wick slides down and and then rides up and down um, it's always worth taking a scotch bright and cleaning any dirt and black off that um, because you you know that can affect i know on my greenhouse heater which is there again is identical burner just bigger um, that can affect how the wick and how the butt wick is balanced and how it runs up and down to higher and lower the flame so it's so always worth cleaning that part there the stem kind of thing the inner tube stem um, and I've washed it all out inside and it's got rid of any dust and debris or dead spiders and it's just really you want to make sure all the holes are open and as I say you've got no blockages there and likewise you know I'm not going to the top has uh, with age and use has gone discolored. We're not too worried about that. I might just give this a bit of a metal polish to tidy that up as well. And then I'll clean the um, the top little flame spreader there. And there again, it's a question of you don't want any carbon in those holes. They want, yeah, that's why I've washed it out and um, given it a good clean. And it's as simple as that. I mean, these are very um, basic, uh, lamps and there's no you know high tech about them really it's very very low tech in fact so I thought I'd cut back in and just show you uh, that I have um, inspected the tank and you perhaps won't see it's very dark in there and I haven't got a torch to shine the tank is in you know nice condition inside and um, doesn't appear to have you know um, be suffering from any damage inside when I am ready to reassemble we'll cut back in all oh, right so I've got my bits together I'm not going to polish it anymore now until it's all back together and just give it a final uh, polish so it's time to try and get this wick back on as say which isn't perhaps going to be the wick has dried to a point um, and it's a question we're going to have to sort of get this down. I don't know whether this is going to be successful at all. Um, it's not the easiest of thing to do when you haven't, as I've said, when you've lost the paper tabs 
off the wick. Um, can be a bit tricky to say the least. So there we go. After, after much faffing around, uh, I couldn't get the old wick through. Um, you know, they start to disintegrate. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I've spent longer trying to get the wick through than I have on the whole job. It's one of those type of things. I found uh, another old wick I'd got, um, which is a 23 wick, I believe. And uh, what I did on the bottom, this one's dry, which is good, a good start. And I put a bit of the, the, the back one, obviously where you haven't got the wick winder, goes through really easy, you know, it's diddly doddly. Um, it's the one, that, it's this kerfuffle here where you've got the wick winder that, you know, down there, um, it get the wick gets caught on that. So what I did, I got a bit of um, strong um, Gorilla duct tape and taped that onto the wick. And I have, I think, Yep, I think we're in business. We've just got to feed that down and get that in the right location now. Make sure we get that and just keep feeding the wick. It's kind of down the tube. Um, trying to keep it level going both sides, which is not particularly easy again. Um, you know, I suppose in their day when you were doing, when you were probably doing this, um, I don't know how long, how long a wick would last probably not long um, when you're using these every day you're doing this every other month probably or you know um, and hopefully we're on the road and then just gently you know keep pulling pulling it down and that wick winder should slip in uh, he says and engage eventually there we go I think we have yes we have engaged um, and actually, it looks like that wick is going to be okay. It's not the best wick. I mean, I think for demonstration purposes, it'll be fine. But I think we might um, invest in a new wick. As I say, you really want, as I've said before, you know, the paper tapes on the bottom. I know I've tried with the greenhouse heater, which is the same burner, yet bigger. It's a two-inch two inch wick. Um, and it's mighty difficult, but that will be all right. Our wick will soak up there and we can we can light it and try it. And um, we've got our wick uh, on and back in quite successfully. After all that faffing about, we just drop our wick um, unit into the tank and then that just screws in. Just do it. Kind of tight, hand tight. So coming back now, we've got our um, wick in place and um, our burner unit screwed back in, into the tank. We put the next bit back on, which I, I don't think this is an original piece. I think somebody replaced it because this really should be um, brass, but never mind. It doesn't really matter. Um, this just kind of uh, slots on. You'll see it's got some little cutouts there. Um, and it just kind of hooks. This is there's some little like splayed out bits in the top here, so you just have to line it up, um, and then we turn that down a bit. We might do, it. and then you just turn it, and it kind of locks under those little splines um, in the top there. I don't know if you will see that, um, but it just kind of locks underneath them. Uh, very simple, really can't go wrong. Then our flame spreader that we've um, just decarboned and make sure the holes are all cleaned. I don't think you'll ever get the black off that, but it's never again, it's not really important. And uh, then we can just check, see if our wick is still winding okay. Yes, it is, it's coming right up. I'm going back down again and it looks looks pretty level it's not too bad i don't think i don't know quite kind of what kind of flame that will give us so there we go managed to a few little drops of that um that's why i put the rag down there um even with the funnel and going as steady as you can yeah <laughs> you can't help but um that's why it's always best really if it's if it wasn't so windy and um raining i'd have took it outside and filled it up but that's got enough in um i would think that probably holds about a pint pint and a half um probably a little bit more actually and um but i think um we dip the 
yeah we've got a good drop in there it should it should be um certainly the wick the wick should be now in the paraffin and if it's a new wick if you're or if the wick has been dry and you know you're revitalizing one of these like i'm doing and the wick has been left dry you want to leave it at least an hour well over an hour really um, before you even think about lighting it um, you know for the paraffin to soak back up and f thoroughly soak the wick and rise right up and also make sure your wick is turned down to your lowest lowest point there we go um, on the wick winder there all right so we're now ready for our um this is the important part of these lamps we're ready for our locks on mantle one has to be extremely careful with these um, they are so very delicate and um, one wants to always hold them never ever touch the mantle material um, and it simply we, we take this um, burner top off and put that on a nice flat surface and you turn it clockwise until it locks under and there we go that that's our mantle uh, fitted it can't come off um, and we'll not touch that again um, the interesting thing you do is obviously um, these need, need to be flamed as you'll see why in a minute why I say that so make sure you've got nothing flammable I'm going to stand that on the floor stand the brake cleaner on the floor nothing flammable around it um, because we're going to um, burn the coating off the mantle quite dramatic isn't it <laughs> So, as I say, always make sure you've got everything flammable out the way. Now, our mantle now is even more delicate. Delicate. It's gone to that kind of burnt white. It's burnt all the hard. I think it's a bit like um, when you used to make model aeroplanes, dope kind of thing, when you put them on wings. So the best thing to do is now is to put our glass um, chimney on and then basically we didn't touch that again we can just remove it as that unit um, so this has been standing some time now so we'll light it up and see what happens if we get you know the other thing of course with these it's a glass chimney so you always want to start them on a very very low setting and get the glass warmed up before you know you even turn it up very important that is as you'll crack the simply crack the glass um at the you know the chimney tube over there um so there we go we're, we're burning all the way around say so we'll turn that right down and then drop our and then that just locks into place like that and then we'll just let that heat up a little while as i say um on a very very low setting there and we've gradually been heating this up um and waiting and we've you know i've, I've had it running now good four or five minutes and you can see it's still on quite a low setting but the mantle is beginning to incandesce I think the word is um, it's got a lovely blue Aladdin flame there is no smell hardly with these you know it's quite a nice smell that the, the the mantle kind of just gives off and there's obviously they do get very warm one has to be extremely careful um, yet a word of warning obviously for safety reasons if you're taking this into your house do be extremely careful with them i mean they are a live flame there is paraffin in there you know um, you have to treat it with the utmost caution and it has to be somewhere where it can't be knocked over but that has said that has said you know i'm i'm sure to most of you that is just pure common sense you know um and as i say you can see if we turn it up you know just how lovely and bright that light gets and you know if you want to put the um globe on it 
you can indeed do. Um, it just tends, tends to shade that a little bit. And it's a very soft light, um, you know. Um, Let's say if we take that off, you'll probably see the, the, be very careful lifting that off. You'll see the mantle, you know, much better. Um, it kind of diffuses the light nicely with the shade on them. And if we turn it up even, you know, these do get incredulously bright. Um, now it's got really warmed up. And um, I think they, I think I read somewhere they can give as much as a 40 or a 60 watt light bulb, you know, um, when, you know, you're running them, I mean, how about, you know, that's, that's incredible. You know, you could, we often think, you know, in times gone by, how did people see to do anything? Well, you know, I could sit here and, um, you know, read a book or, you know, I can, I can, it's given me enough light. I know I've got some backlight just for the camera. Um, but, um, so there we go. I hope you might've enjoyed that. That's, um, got my Aladdin, um, paraffin lamp, my Aladdin 23 sorted out up and running. Um, all the parts are available. The, the mantles had been in very short supply and were making silly prices, but they are available again. And the mantles cost about £25 at the moment. And you have to be careful, but they do last, you know, a fair amount of time if you're very careful and don't knock the lamp, etc. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's a bit even getting even brighter. And, um, you know, you. <laughs> I picked these up many years ago from an auction in a box, a box of them. Um, and um, I think it was about five pounds for the whole box from a, from a local auction near to me. Um, so obviously, you know, they, they don't make a lot of, you know, and they still, you can still pick them up on eBay and sites such as. So, um, so to extinguish, you know, and there again, when you're turning it down, you want to do, it's not, it's not like electricity, you know, you want to do it all very um, gradual um, to cool it all down. And then a quick, a quick blow across the top and you'll see, you always want to make sure you've got some smoke, you'll have a little bit of smoke come out there, then you know the flame has been extinguished. Very easy. Um, but as I say, um, follow a simple, few simple rules and they are quite safe. Um, but I mean, as I say, there is potential there as, as everybody must realise. So there we go. Anyway, I'm um, rambling on as always. So um, I'll end this video. And uh, so as always, thanks for watching. And I hope you all have a happy new year. And um, I'll be back with some videos very shortly. And um, thank you to everyone that has new subscribers. And for all your lovely comments and your kind comments. Thank you. And um, bye for now anyway.